uh, I see the notification that we are live streaming on YouTube. Okay. Now, now you're going to have to help me figure out where. So did it open up a new tab in your browser? I don't see a new tab open up in my browser unless it starts opening up one now. And there is a delay, so it could take a few seconds. Well, I'm sure it'll start the echo. See a new channel. Hmm. Oh no, here it comes. So, and there is a delay, so it could take a few seconds. I'm sure it'll start the echo. No. So, where do I, I? I don't see, I never see where to close yeah, so, it out. I would. Oh no, here it comes. Mm -hmm. so, there isn't a way, so it could take seconds. I'm sure it'll start the echo. No. So where do I, I, I don't, see, I never see where to close it out. Easier for me to turn this volume down because I can't hear anything. It does this. Okay, so I just don't know. I don't ever know where I'm supposed where there's another one open. Okay, so on my browser there is. I mean, I have the KSBA open. I have, um, wait a minute. Okay, now let's see. Okay, I think I got it. Uh, okay, hold on, let's see here. Yeah. I think I got it. See, I just had to have you on the phone just for moral support to figure it out. <laughs> All right, thank you. Okay, that wasn't so bad. I think if, if we have to do this one more month, I may have that part figured out. I told Tim, I said, we've got to get on here early and go ahead and do this because I can't be stressing having a meeting started and have the background and echoing and hitting the panic button. Yeah. So, Julie, mm -hmm. um, you, you can ask the board after the meeting. Um, you know, the governor apparently July 1st the next part of the phase in is 50 or more. Uh -huh. So, you know, if the rest of the board, um, and, and, you know, as long as nothing else, you know, changes, if everyone wants to go ahead and do an in-person meeting in July, of course, our July meeting is the third week. It's always the third week instead of the second. You know, we can, it doesn't matter to me. So it's July 23rd, I think you have on Yeah. There. yeah. Yeah, I mean, I don't really care one way or the other. Whatever everybody wants to do is fine with me. Yeah, yeah I don't care. I don't care either. Unless someone's on vacation and maybe that would work better for them. I don't know. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, and that's usually why we do it that week. Um, just because it seems like that second week in July, we were always having to reschedule it anyway. Uh -huh. because of vacations but I you know the 23rd people may be on vacation as well but whatever 
Laura, did you get set up all by yourself? I think I, yeah, Mike's in South Carolina, so I had to do my best. Oh, (laughs) good. You did well. Somebody's trying to get on down there, it looks like, but I don't know who that is. Oh, Chastity. Chastity. Yeah, but she just needs to turn her uh, camera on, like. I think it's on. I I think think she 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 left the room a minute. Oh. Oh, okay. I was out in the pool and I'm like, oh, shoot, I need to hurry up and get in there and take a shower and get ready so the back of my hair is all wet. <laughs> it looks good. I tried it, to looks, it looks more blonde. It is. It is. My sister um, put more blonde in it, but with the, but with me playing pickleball every day and being out in the sun, it's really turned it blonde for sure. Yeah, I like it blonde. I think it looks good. I used to be a blonde. Did you? Oh, oh yeah, I, I was always blonde until um, probably about ninety three ish. I think I, I went to red, and so it's always been like strawberry blonde since then. Yeah. Now you're going. You're going back full circle, back to the well, blonde. I'm thinking that it will help with the gray. So. Yeah, that's yeah, that's true. Yeah. That's a, a good hair color strategy. Yeah. yeah. My sister told me that, so I'm like, yeah, that's, that sounds good. Which sister does it, Margie? No, Becky, my sister in Lexington. Okay. She, uh, she's my hairdresser. Oh, yeah, that's nice. Yeah, it is. I bet she's cheaper than mine. She's cheap for me, yeah. 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 <laughs> Usually I just have to take her out to eat, so that's, that's nice. Of course, when her whole family goes, then... It can be expensive, but it's well worth it. Gives me a yeah. chance to see her. So I, I love to go there and see her. So she plays pickleball too. So she and I play play quite a bit. I go up there and play pickleball and then get my hair done. Yeah. Hey Dion. Hey. Hi. I got a haircut, but mine's too short. It is short. I didn't well, it's Sandy. Sandy I never like cuts it, my though. hair. It's lacy. I think it looks good. It looks good. It's just hmm. too short, like right here, because my hair is so thin. I don't like how. Yeah, I think it looks really good. Yeah. Like it it right doesn't here. look. It doesn't look too short on screen. No, okay. it doesn't. Good. I just won't turn sideways. <laughs> hey, Chastity. Hey. We're recording. We got that part of this set up early. Tim has to walk me through those steps. <laughs> I said one more month I would have that down. Robin, are you and Sean there? Uh-huh. Are you and Sean there? I see you and Sean on the screen, but I don't see your faces. Well, my, I'm not going to turn my video on. <laughs> Oh, okay. It runs my battery down too quick. Wow. Gotcha. And that link you sent me in that text didn't work. Tim had to give me a different number. He even needed a number. I just got right on. When yeah. I went to the link, it took me to a, a different 815040, a different ID number. Huh. Huh. I don't know. I mean, if you'd gone to the, you probably couldn't get on your email though, could you? No. Because your internet's down. I, I, can't even get on, I can't even check my email on my phone. I know, I know. That's that's why I was at the office and I said, I got to go home. I can't. I, I have AT&T, so we had no internet. We had no cell. I couldn't even check my email on my cell phone. Oh, yeah. AT&T wasn't working in Augusta. Yeah. Hey, Sean. I'm here. You look <laughs> comfortable. I am tight. <laughs> Are you sure you're not at Robin's in his recliner? <laughs> I couldn't get in my office. Got all my winter clothes in there. Well, there you are. Well, Mr. my battery. Yeah. Yesterday, remember yesterday it ran down real quick in that meeting. Yeah. So I don't know if it does. I'll let you know. Okay. Well, Sean's got the recliner tonight, so you're good. Smart guy. Yeah. And it looks like Jim Downing's logging in. I'm trying. 
Well, hey, Jim. Hi, everyone. Hello. Hello. Hi, Mr. Downey. How are you, Jim? This is going to be uh, interesting for my ADD. I'm trying to look at all of you at one time. <laughs> Hard to do on a phone. Yeah, it is. Oh, yeah. Can't imagine. So, Jim, I'll just kind of tell you where you are on the agenda. Yes, ma'am. Um, we have the communication. So, Mr. Kelch will give his report. I will give my report. And then um, we get down to business action and discussion items. Mr. Literal will do the monthly budget report. And after that, then we have you on. That'd be great. And so um, that's, that is where then you can go over uh, the renewal. Um, and then if board members have any questions. And okay. listen, after you finish your report you're welcome to log off i mean we obviously still have a lot of agenda items after you so I, I probably will and if it's okay i'll just take my video off while you do the rest of your business to give you one less visual to look at is that all right <laughs> I, I will be here anytime you're ready for me okay thanks jim thanks all right six o'clock are we ready to go we're ready all right roll call dion here. Lori? Here. Cassidy? Here. Don? Here. And myself? Here. Um, Mr. Couch, can you do the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And would you mind doing the mission statement? <laughs> The mission of Augusta Independent Schools is to ensure all students achieve high levels of learning in a nurturing climate, empowering them to be responsible and productive citizens of a global community. Thank you, Mr. Couch. Uh, we need approval of the agenda. Do I have a motion to approve the agenda? Made. Cassidy. Cassidy. Second. Second. Laura, second. Okay, the motion was made and seconded. All in favor, say aye. 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 All right. Um, first thing we have is the principal's report, Mr. Couch. All right, uh, just a couple things. First of all, the youth employment program update. Uh, third year, off and running smooth. Mr. Bryan does an outstanding job with that paperwork. We've got, uh, as of today, 22 students approved. Uh, I think 20 of them started working this week with two more, one on vacation and one to start working Monday. Uh, Got people spread out, got a couple at the school, a few at the school, a couple at the city, uh, water treatment plant, a and IGA, general store, Brooksville child care, uh, like a couple at Bradford. So we've got the one at Miller Lumber Company. So we've got kids spread out all over the, uh, uh, the town, even one in Brooksville that wants to go into child care, working there uh, with Stephanie Hamilton. Uh, Mr. Bryan, and with the help of Mr. Literal and I, have conducted uh, two workshops already uh, with another one on Monday. So um, going, going very smooth so far this year. Uh, just excited to get that. That's a program that benefits a lot of our students. You know, they can work up to 32 hours a week, $8 an hour. Also benefits the community with a little bit of free labor and uh, things like that. So uh, that's going well. All right, great. Mr. Kelch, if you want to tell them um, how much, I think, don't they get up to $400 in incentives this year, or was it $500? Uh, they can get, well, $600, I think, actually. Yeah. They can get $50, eight workshops at $50 each. If they attend each of those workshops, they get $50 gift card. I think if they at attend every workshop, they get a bonus $100 gift card, and then if they get a positive review from them and their employer at the end of the program, they'll get another hundred dollars. So I think of my math, right? It's actually $600, a possible extra for $600 on top of the $8 an hour they make 32 hours a week. So pretty, pretty good, pretty good bonus. $50 yeah. for about a 45 minute workshop. Not bad at all. 
Are these students mostly still in school or are they already? No, they have to be out. We can, we were able to get four in school kids, which I don't know, that's more than typical. Uh, mm -hmm. They have to be out of school. Uh, it's geared to students not necessarily in college or that have some kind of barrier, whether it be a financial barrier or learning barrier or uh, a parent that's been incarcerated, there's gotta be some kind of barrier to get these children approved. So it's okay. uh, more for those kind of kids, but we do have four students uh, actually in school and the other, uh, I guess that would be 18 out of school students, which a lot of those are graduating seniors that is one loophole between graduating high school and going to college, you are eligible. So we've got a lot from that graduating class making up a lot of that. Good, good, all right. And then I just want to discuss, uh, as we know, next year we, we fully believe, we really don't know what school is gonna look like. We don't know uh, a lot, but we do feel, I think the consensus is at some point throughout the year, there will be more NTI or more virtual online instruction. So I just wanted to update you uh, on some of the uh, online platforms we'll be using. Uh, of course, uh, the bulk of that will be our iReady, which proved very valuable last year uh, and will be as well. Uh, with that comes the iReady Teacher Toolbox, which pretty much gears lessons to each individual kid and gives a uh, ideas to the teachers or plans their lessons for them based on each individual kid's needs uh, per their original assessment. Uh, we're also, I think very close, Ms. McCain can probably to purchasing Achieve 3000. I know we've had a couple meetings with uh, their, their uh, spokesperson and got some emails there. I think we've kind of changed quotes a little bit or asked for a, a different quote, but I think that's something we're gonna get from our CARES money. That will focus more for, uh, you know, our eight through 12 older kids. That's the program I talked a little bit about last month that has uh, uh, limitless reading options and has those reading options on six to eight different grade levels based on the kids. So say if you've got a book like uh, To Kill a Mockingbird, it is written, they've got it already written on five or six different reading levels. So kids on a lower level can still get the crux of To Kill a Mockingbird without having to read it on the grade level it is. So we like that option. It also has a lot of options for kid, specific areas that kids are high interest areas, uh, has a science and social studies option, which we think will benefit our kids very well that already really doesn't offer. Uh, we also have uh, Plato. I'm not sure that's actually called Plato. Is it still? but that's a credit recovery. That's a full curriculum for students to use to catch up if they've failed a class or gotten behind on a class. Or for some of our sophomores that are taking vocational school and might not be able to be here for classes we teach so that they can go ahead and take college classes or take vocational school, they can take a couple of their required classes on that Play-Doh. That also comes with 24, 25 licenses for ACT prep. Uh, which is very beneficial for our sophomores and juniors. And then we're still using the Zillow, which helps with each of our kids required individual education plans that each student uh, has to complete. And I think, I don't, I don't think I left any out, Ms. McCain. Um, the only, um, I think we use ACE as well. Um, well, that, that basically is just a, a program that they work on their ILPs, I think, in that program as well. I think okay. that's the one that Mr. Bryant probably uses. But no, I, I think you've gotten the, the bulk of those. So we, uh, like I said, we fully anticipate needing to use quite a bit of those, if not all of those, because I think the one certainty is that from the communication we're getting at some point uh, next school year, we will have to do some NTI days whether it be at the beginning or when they when there's that anticipated spike or what what happens. So any questions on either one of those areas? What what's the program that you were talking about where they do the um, individualized reading levels for the like to kill a mockingbird? That's achieved three part of the achieve three thousand. Okay. We're in the process of uh, 
think we had gotten the initial quote and we had talked and kind of wanted to add a couple of things and possibly uh, look at with a quote with the social studies and science. So uh, we had a, a Zoom meeting a couple of weeks ago with their uh, salesperson and that was very, very beneficial, very helpful in seeing what all they had. And I was very impressed with, you know, that was the thing that stuck out to me, but also the high interest number of high interest reading areas for uh, middle and high school, you know, whether it be coding or video gaming or sports cars, just a lot of high interest uh, factual reading that older kids would like. So currently our iReady teacher toolbox um, is individualized in reading and mathematics for students up to eighth grade. So we know with the anticipation of having more virtual online learning, we needed to supplement what we currently have. So we've been working with Achieve 3000. They have many online programs from Achieve 3000 Literacy to Achieve 3000 Math to Actively Learn to another program that's K through two that's called Smarty Ants. So what we're doing is trying to fill in the gaps for um, our teachers to have adequate um, resources. The thing about Achieve 3002 is all of their programs are already aligned to the standards and we're gonna be able to have coverage, um, you know, kindergarten through 12th grade. Whereas right now, much of the iReady only goes to eighth grade. Um, every one of these programs, they all have their little, a little niche and, and a little something you know, special and different for them. Um, and definitely with the actively learn with what Mr. Kelch just mentioned, and they have a literacy library of like 25,000 books that's on all different Lexile levels and um, high interest. And this also is a curriculum based program where teachers can not only use that online, but then they have a whole library that they can use it um, for face-to-face, -face, whole group lessons, small group lessons, or individualized learning as well. So what we've been trying to do is because it's a really large investment, just like iReady, um, Teacher Toolbox is approximately $17,000 a year. Uh, this too is, is going to be you know, probably anywhere from 16 to $20,000. We're, we're trying to make sure that we get the programs that we think we're gonna get the biggest bang for our buck and um, help our students and teachers the most. Any other questions? All right, moving on to the superintendent's report. Okay, first thing um, I want to just give the board um, just a little report on the um, Kentucky Good Day project uh, for uh, Give Back Tuesday, which we did on the 30th. And that was a couple weeks ago. We had a pretty good turnout, probably between 20, 25 participants between um, faculty, staff, students, and community members. Um, it was definitely a, a really good experience you know, moving forward and uh, thinking about next year, hopefully, hopefully, knock on wood, we'll be past the closure. And I think that's gonna help us to be able to um, get more student engagement and really get them more um, involved and participate in the program next year. But overall, it went really well. And the foundation, we had a meeting uh, yesterday evening and we have been getting some uh, donations have been coming in for it. So it's something that, you know, we know is, is gonna uh, benefit the, the school district and our students um, as well. Any question about Give Back Tuesday? Um, the next thing I want to share with you is we are looking at participating in what is called the J1 Student Exchange Program, which is basically a, an international uh, foreign exchange program. And I've been in communication with the regional director um, from the state of Kentucky. And I've spoken with the um, administrative team and, and been talking with Mr. Kelch. And so we're looking at um, participation for the upcoming school year. 
they actually currently have a uh, hundred over a hundred students that need to be placed. Most of these students are in Europe, um, primarily Denmark, Sweden, Switzerland, um, Germany, France, Spain, Italy. Um, and so what will happen is they will be looking for host families. Now, um, all of these students, are, of course, um, are vetted and the, the school actually gets to select, they get all of their information and bios and then they select um, students as, as well. Well, part, the host families do. Um, from there, what will happen is it's not the school district's responsibility to um, find a host family. It's more, you know, their, uh, their platform to do so. However, they um, certainly appreciate, you know, the school helping. They have a lot of marketing materials and that sort of thing that we can um, put out on social media and on our district website. Um, so in thinking in terms of um, host families, if the school board has any um, anyone in mind that you think might be interested, please uh, let us know because uh, we are looking at participation. The only thing, and I, I'll be putting that information out on um, social media and the website here next week. Any, any questions about that program? How long would they be here? Um, they would be here the entire school year. Okay. So almost a year. I do know that um, the d director said that basically all the host family really has to provide is basically three meals a day and just transportation if they needed, you know, to go to sporting events or um, whatever. She said they actually have all of their own spending money and, um, you know, they buy their own toiletries and, and things like that. So, you know, they work with host families mm -hmm. to find a student that they think, you know, would be a good fit to for their, their family if they have other sibling, other children and, and that sort of thing. In, any questions about that? Okay, so um, the next the next item is the reopening plan. I want to talk a little bit about that. Obviously, it's very challenging um, right now because it's like I told the administrative uh, team yesterday when we met. It's it's a moving target, um, so it's really hard at this point. Uh, to know what our plan is going to look like just yet. Uh, what we do know is that the reopening plan will have to be in compliance with local and state, you know, health guidelines and restrictions. Um, and those are changing weekly. And so that's why at this point, it's necessary to wait, you know, until later you know, in the summer before we issue our plan. If we put a plan out today, if we put a plan out next week or the week after, it would already um, have to change. So we're trying to wait um, as, as long as we can uh, so that hopefully that will be um, the actual plan. So I do expect that um, I will be bringing uh, and presenting a plan to the board next month. Um, and I, I do know that, um, you know, this is something that's really important for our parents. Mr. Literal has put out, uh, we had developed a survey to get some feedback and input from our parents. And so looking at the survey results, we know that our parents um, overall have indicated the majority of them, about 80, 85%, you know, want to send their kids back, you know, in August. So we know the majority of our parents want to send their kids back um, to school as normal. So we really ask that parents and guardians and, and staff be very patient and very flexible and understanding because we can only do what we can do based on 
what the um, you know restrictions of our local and state officials are. So we still have to um, be compliant and adhere to those. So during our admin team meeting uh, yesterday, we have started having discussions about that reopening plan just to flesh out um, a five point plan. And that would basically give some guidance um, to the reopening team that we are in the process of establishing. All districts have to have a reopening team um, in order to have all of the shareholders in your school districts come together and have their input um, and their feedback in developing this plan. So we're gonna have about 20 um, shareholders on this team. It will be the administrative staff and then also made up of faculty, staff, parents, and um, a couple of board members. So I will be um, asking for participation, at least at least one of you. Um, certainly if a couple of you would like to participate, that would be great as well. Um, so we plan on meet, uh, meeting a couple of times, two to three times to develop our plan and then present that um, to the board. The reopening, uh, team will meet uh, for the first time on June 22nd at four o'clock. Uh, is that right, Mr. Kelch, four o'clock? Yes, I texted Miss Brewer right before the meeting. We had reached out to four or five parents and uh, four o'clock was the earliest. We wanted to, we didn't want to do it as late as real late. So four o'clock was the time that through. So we'll have at least three parents that, could, okay. that said four o'clock. So I think that will work the best. Okay. So we can go ahead and confirm that. Okay, so we're looking at four o'clock on the 22nd. So for those board members, board member or board members that um, participate on the reopening team, that will be the time. Um, so the reopening team, we're gonna start fleshing out our specific plan. So our five point plan is gonna cover this. It's gonna cover the actual operations and logistics. And of course, these are the discussions that the admin team has been already having. Um, we also have done a survey. So we've already started to gather um, feedback from parents and from community. So the operations and logistics will basically be the who, what, when, where, and how. Um, so for example, the school calendar that was originally approved by the board, our first day of school is August 24th. And, and we know that, you know, we would like to, if possible, um, stick to that, that date. But at this point, we don't know if that's gonna be possible. Um, we know that we, based on the survey results and just the feedback from faculty and staff, uh, we would like to have the maximum capacity with students and staff um, allowable uh, based on those health restrictions. So if we are allowed to have 150 students in the building at one time, we're gonna have 150 students and staff in the building at one time. So we want to, um, operate at maximum capacity, whatever that, wherever that is at that time. And then we'll be looking, you know, operations and logistics would then cover transportation, food service, that sort of thing. So the second part of the five point plan is safety and health procedures. So we have to determine what that's gonna look like in terms of social distancing, masks, proper, um, sanitation and disinfecting and taking temperatures and just um, health checks. We know that's something that we're gonna have to do as well. So we'll be fleshing out um, those procedures and protocols as well. Third uh, point of the plan is the learning design model. So just this week, we have uh, been receiving uh, reopening guidance documents from the Department of Education, one of those being a learning design um, model. Uh, it basically gives us different options to consider 
they don't dictate what schools should do. They just basically give us um, different suggestions and ideas and questions to think about as far as implications and just things to consider. Some of those learning design models are a scheduled rotation, a synchronous opt-in hybrid model, a combination model, online virtual school. Now we know, we know that we're going to have to have a very solid virtual and online learning plan. And that is because moving forward, based on the survey results that we, we saw, um, we're probably going to have a percentage of our parents that aren't gonna feel comfortable sending their kids back to um, in-person school for a little while. So we know we're probably gonna have to uh, plan for about 15, probably 15 to 20% of our students whose you know, parents um, want to continue the online virtual learning at home. And, and that's fine. We will be prepared to do that. We also are preparing that plan to be very solid because we don't know what's gonna happen. We are anticipating there will be intermittent closures. Um, you know, that, that's already uh, been communicated to school districts that we need to be prepared for intermittent closures. Um, so with what's been happening recently with the reopening of um, you know, the economy, we are seeing a spot spikes in the number of cases. So you know, at this point, we don't know if we're going to be informed that we can't start school in August. You know, they may end up telling us that we need to delay until September or, or whatever. So a big part of our plan will definitely be a hybrid that will include a solid online virtual plan that we can um, quickly shift to and do 100% um, online if necessary. The other part of that would be some type of in-person on a probably a rotational schedule where we brought in the maximum number of students allowable based on the restrictions. Um, the fourth point of the plan would be the social and emotional well being. Um, that is something that will be most important when we get students back in the building. Uh, when students first come back in the building, that's going to be our first priority is really um, looking at at these kids and seeing if their basic needs, um, you know, where they are psychologically. I mean, this has been extremely stressful. This has caused a lot of anxiety in adults and children alike. So that's going to be something we're going to have to make sure that we um, connect these kids with the resources and the supports that they need in the school or in the community. Um, so that will be the first, first thing that we look at. And then the um, fifth part of the plan will be the academic plan. Um, we know we're going to have an achievement gap there because of kids just being out of school for such an extended period of time. Um, that achievement gap, you know, an, another piece of that is the um, curriculum gap. So with the achievement gap comes a curriculum gap because teachers, you know, didn't have kids basically the, the last fourth of the school year. So what we have is we've got, you know, uh, teachers will have to determine what was not covered with the curriculum so that there can be conversations and collaboration with teachers to make sure that is covered and taught when students do get back um, to school. And then of course, assessment. Assessment is going to be a huge, huge piece of what we do when we return. That's gonna be really um, the crux for the first probably month uh, that students get back because we're really gonna have to uh, assess and drill down where kids are, um, you know, how much 
you know, they, they obviously have, have gone back and, and what we need to do. And then from there, we'll have the individualized learning uh, plans in place. And then a big part of the whole academic plan is the teachers, is the teachers and the preparation and the planning and the professional development that we'll be doing um, this summer. Because we wanna do a good job of really preparing them uh, for doing a lot of virtual online learning, as well as giving them opportunities to really review their curriculum and be able to work collaboratively with the other teachers and then, um, you know, have them prepared for assessment, the assessment piece for the kids. <clears throat> so that's, there's a few things about the reopening plan. Um, that's where we are currently. So we don't have a plan just yet, but we definitely have been thinking about it. It's our number one priority right now and, and we will have a plan. And as soon as we do, I will present that to the board. And um, I also plan on putting out a statement uh, tomorrow, just a very brief statement on social media on the website, just to let parents and guardians and and faculty, staff, community members just kind of know what, what's going on um, when they ask, because I know that is the big question. When people run into school board members, when people are running into teachers, into administrators, we're all being asked, when's school starting? What's going on? I know that's that's what I'm getting a lot. So we'll, we'll go ahead and put, put something out there to let everyone know what's happening and what the plan is moving forward. All right. And while I'm on this, do we have um, anyone who would like to be on the reopening team? I'm in town, so I can be on it. Okay. So we've got. We've got I would like to be on it. Okay. So we've got um, Laura and Julie. Thank you. I appreciate it. And. Uh, we really can't have any more. We'll have a forum and then we'll be in trouble. Cassie, do you want to be on it? Because I don't mind. Okay. I, I just figured since you had those kids in school, you might want to be on there. No, that's fine. You're fine. Mike, you're um, fine. The next thing, uh, Mr. Literal, he's going to just tell you real quickly about um, the Infinite Campus online registration that's free for the districts. So um, just like school districts are getting CARES Act money, the Department of Education has received CARES Act money and they're using a portion of that to provide school districts with what's called um, online registration for two years for free. So um, of course we discussed this, we did not want to implement anything that we've been to take away in a couple of years. So um, there is a, a basic version of, of the registration that we will be able to keep uh, once the free version is up and that will be financially feasible for us to, to keep that. So basically um, what this will do is it will help to reduce, I won't say eliminate, but reduce the uh, enrollment packets that parents get at the beginning of the year. So especially a lot of the demographic information that I know parents with multiple children feel probably like they're writing the same thing three or four times. Mm -hmm. um, that will be uh, obviously more efficient on the parents and it will be more efficient for the school staff because instead of dealing so much with the papers, I mean, the parents are basically entering it themselves directly in the infinite campus and school staff can just sort of go through and review and make sure everything looks, looks correct. And then a push of a button and it's basically loaded and updated in infinite campus. So uh, we feel like this was a, certainly in 2020, anytime you can eliminate uh, paper is a, is a good option. So uh, excited that we're having the opportunity to move forward with this um, on a pretty quick timeline. This is normally something they do over several months, but because we obviously want to have it in place for the start of this year with all the social distancing that we're working hard right now to get um, to get that set up and get our data cleaned up in Infinite Campus. Any questions? Sounds good. And I just, the last thing I wanted to just uh, give you a quick report on was the um, FEMA. We are supposed to get some funding from FEMA, that has not um, 
that has not been uh, pushed through yet, but Mr. Literal and I have been getting some updates as far as setting up accounts and uh, just getting prepared there. So we, in, in addition to the money and Mr. Literal and his budget report, will tell you more about the ESSER and uh, GEARS money that we've received through the CARES Act. We will be, um, we are anticipating some funds um, through FEMA, but we don't know what that's gonna look like just yet. But they have been, you know, basically getting getting things activated for the school district. Okay. And that's all I have, unless you all have any questions. I'm just curious with the CARES Act, are you able to pay for the program you talked about earlier that helps with um, reading or is that something you don't want to do even if you can because you won't be able to do it continuously you know, like he said into the future is right um no that is exactly where that program will be funded through um mr literal when he gets into his budget report um he's going to tell you uh, most of the um uh, most of the the money that we're receiving is really going to be for the technology upgrades that we need and to cover you know online virtual programs Any other questions? No. All Good right. question, though. Yeah. Thank you, Lisa. Um, the next thing is personnel. Looks like uh, we accepted a resignation from Maria Hitt, third grade teacher, and we hired Randy Bloomfield for her, in her place. Uh, citizens and uh, board members, Chastity? No. Laurie? No. Dion? No. Vaughn? No. Don? No. And I don't have any either. All right. Um, we're going to talk about the monthly budget report. All right. Um, so looking at our uh, revenue receipts through May, our uh, receipts totaled $1,772,000. Local revenue from the general fund with $289,000 received for property taxes, $117,000 in utility tax, uh, 50, over $54,000 collected in our public service commission taxes, uh, over um, $25,000 received in motor vehicle taxes, $12,000 collected in tuition payments, $5,300 in transportation reimbursement, um, Four thousand dollars in donations, uh, twenty-two hundred in miscellaneous revenue, fifteen hundred in delinquent taxes, uh, eleven $1 hundred for uh, refunds for prior expenditures, and seven hundred dollars for the fitness center, and then earned interest. Most of that in the uh, cash insured sweep account of twenty-nine hundred dollars. State revenue uh, for the general fund seek funding was at one million two hundred and forty-two thousand, uh, and approximately fifty-nine hundred from revenue in lieu of taxes from the state. And lastly, our general fund federal revenue was Medicaid reimbursement of $5,600. Our expenditures through May totaled approximately $1,725,000. School budget uh, through May had spent $19,100 with um, most of these expenses haven't changed. They haven't spent much the last month. Uh, the categories that did change, uh, copying costs $6,300. Uh, and I think, um, $3,900 in general supplies and technology resources. The maintenance budget through May totaled $275,000 with uh, some of the expense categories that changed, 87,000 in our utility services, 66,000 on salaries and benefits, um, 24,000 in general supplies, 11,300 on building repairs and maintenance and plumbing expenses, uh, 10,200 on professional services, uh, and through May, 90% of the maintenance budget has been utilized. Transportation budget through May uh, with <clears throat> costs totaling $82,000. Uh, 38,000 of that was on salaries and benefits. And um, that's been really the only change in expenses over the last month. For the general fund, then our receipts currently exceed our expenditures by nearly 47,000. Special Revenue Fund, as Ms. McCain alluded to, we received notification of our allotment of our CARES Act money. The ESSER funds and the GEAR funds combined total right at $100,000. Um, and of course, the uh, 
the purpose, the primary purpose of those funds are supposed to be uh, to assist in virtual learning and, and food service. Thankfully, our food service, as I'll still reference in a few minutes, is, has a very healthy balance. So we were going to, we were coming up on having to refresh most of our Chromebooks anyway. It's been three or four years since we bought those, and that's about the life of a Chromebook. So um, it, it really came in handy. We were going to have to do it anyway, and obviously with possibly being, um, you know, uh, more NTI and virtual learning, we wanted to be sure that we had the devices to support that. So we're purchasing uh, 160 Chromebooks that will allow us to uh, extend our one-to-one -one all the way down to kindergarten and then replace some of the Chromebooks that need to be replaced in the upper grade levels. So between the Chromebooks and you have to make sure you have the cases for those and the charging stations, um, you know, that right there is probably, you know, 50 to 55% of our CARES Act expenses. And then like Ms. McCain's alluded to, purchasing some of those uh, uh, curriculum programs through that as well. Um, we're also looking at, you want to tell them about the mobile hotspots because that's, that's another. Yes. Um, so we're going to be looking to purchase some hotspots for uh, primarily for our uh, families that do not have internet access and are unable to do any sort of virtual learning. Um, you know, without that, that was part of the survey uh, question. And we had a, about 24 respondents on that survey that said they did not have and we're excluding, when we talk about internet service here, we're, we're excluding cell phone service. We want to know legitimate um, internet service uh, through, at, through the home. So had 24 respondents. So we're, I've been working with uh, T-Mobile to get some quotes on providing that service. And then also now looking at um, purchasing cameras and microphones for the teacher's classrooms with the possibility that teachers will have students in their classroom while also be teaching students who are still at home. And um, looking at the food service fund, our receipts through May totaled $154,000, 140,000 through uh, federal reimbursement, 12,000 local revenue and 2,000 state revenue. Our expenditures um, through May included 147, or they were at $147,000. That included 75,000 on food, 64,000 on salaries and benefits, uh, 4,000 400 on equipment repair, 2100 on general supplies, $800 on dues and fees and $600 on equipment. So our food service balance has held pretty strong at it's currently at $56,000, which is where it's been a couple of months. So while we've had a significant revenue decrease, we've also had a decrease in our in our food expenses. So that's helped us kind of stay pretty close to where we where we've been. Any questions about the budget report? All right, I need a motion to approve the monthly budget report. Eon, May. And a second? Cassidy. All right, there was a motion made, seconded. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Uh, aye. Okay, um, the next thing we have is to uh, the Liberty Mutual Insurance Renewal for 2020-2021 school year. Mr. Downing. I am here. Uh, Jim, would it be helpful for me to share my screen and, and bring up the form? If you need that, I can bring that up anytime. Probably. Okay. Oh, no. Oh, no, Mr. Literal. Be there. Be there for me. Every time I well, try they... something new, I need, I need support. <laughs> okay. I can get you enough information if it. Can you all see my screen? Yes. Okay. So um, let me pull it up. Okay. Can can everyone see that now? Yes. Yes. Okay. I'm impressed. I am too. <laughs> <laughs> we'll uh, we'll get to the bottom uh, of the screen or of the document here in a minute. The the uh, the end result is uh, less uh, total insurance costs than you paid last year, but that we'll get to that. That's entirely due to 
great results in your workers comp uh, because of your folks are taking great care of themselves. So let's, let's start at the top. I'll probably flip it a little bit. Uh, and uh, Ms. McCain, if you can scroll, scroll down there to the bottom at, uh, to show the Kimi numbers, mm -hmm. that's probably the place to start. So anyway, thank you for having me tonight. I've done this before. I've never done it via Zoom. So we're all becoming experts here. So I appreciate it. I wish I could be in front of you to somehow relate to you the passion that I have for the Augusta uh, community and the Augusta Board of Education. I've uh, been uh, privileged to ensure the district since back in the superintendent quarter days. Uh, Rob, Rob Hall is a, a lifelong friend, so I've been uh, associated with uh, the Augusta Board for a very long time. I work uh, closely with Miss McCain and Barry and uh, Tim and Coach Kelch, and uh, as you already know, they represent you well. They are uh, terrific people to go to go along with uh, uh, folks that I call friends now, so I'm blessed to, to be involved here. So from a uh, corporate point of view, uh, I am now part of Assured Partners. Uh, I have been an independent agent in Maysville uh, since 1977. And uh, I recently moved to Lexington to be with, be closer to grandkids, but I'm in Maysville uh, several days a week. So I'm still working full time. We insure most of the districts in Northern Kentucky. Uh, Assured Partners insures about 50 districts in the state. Uh, we insure uh, Bracken County, Mason County, Fleming County, pretty much every, all of your neighbors are insured by us uh, one way or another. So as we look at the numbers then, uh, the workers count numbers are very positive. They're down about uh, $5,600 in total premium. Uh, that's largely because that's because of a couple different reasons. One is uh, you have three basic rate codes in your workers comp exposure, non-professional, which is everybody but teachers and then uh, drivers as well. So one of those, uh, one of those, two of those three codes have came down, come down in rates with Kimi, which is the market of choice for workers comp in Kentucky. Don't know the exact number, but they probably insure about 140 of the 173 districts for workers compensation in Kentucky. What I want to draw your attention to and and uh, highlight is the uh, number that I highlighted there on the document. Uh, your experience mod, uh, I've coded this a little bit because Barry and Ms. McCain are, are used to hearing these words. So I'll explain that in just a second, but uh, the mod dropped from 1.36 to 0.89. So I'll take uh, 45 seconds and explain that to you. A 1.0 experience mod in your workers comp, it's all reflective of the past three years of workers comp claims, not counting the current year. So 1.0 simply means your average. Okay, that's what, what you're looking for. So anything better than that. So unfortunately, we had a significant work comp claim several years ago. Uh, that has now, if you will, rolled off that experience mod calculation that three year prior. So it dropped from 1.36 to, to 0.89. So as we look at positive real results there at the bottom of $2,000 less in total insurance cost here, that is entirely because your folks are taking care of each other on a day-to-day -day basis. So if there's a way to, to uh, celebrate that and, and pat those folks on the back, that's a great thing. And uh, so looking to celebrate that a little bit. Barry won't, as Ms. McCain will tell you, Barry won't allow me to talk about the experience mod much in front of him because the day that I congratulated him last time was the day we had the big work comp claim. So he, uh -huh. he brought a little bit of bad luck there. So nothing but positive on the work comp side, you're in the right market uh, and uh, uh, everything's great. Okay. Any questions on the work comp? Mm -hmm. So as we transition back up to the, the bad news in terms of, of the pricing, uh, you're looking at Liberty Mutual. As I think Ms. McCain and Barry and Tim and, and the rest of the team, Mr. Coach Kelch will tell you, I, I, I work for the district. I don't work for Liberty Mutual. Uh, my job is to find the best market for you, both in terms of pricing and, and uh, uh, coverage. And it remains uh, Liberty Mutual in spite of that increase. So that's about a nine and a half percent increase as you, as you have right in front of you there. Uh, the frustrating part for Ms. McCain and Barry and I is that I don't have the, I could probably go through my, my uh, loss runs, but the district hadn't had a significant loss in about four years. So the loss results uh, for the district are absolutely off the charts terrific. 
and to not see that reflect itself in somewhat stable uh, pricing is frustrating for all of us. Uh, Ms. McCain is a uh, uh, fights for you, uh, for the kids uh, valiantly. And uh, I hope she would agree that I do the same, but the, the end result is a nine and a half percent increase with Liberty Mutual. So in that process, we decided to go out to market. So we represent, Assured Partners represents all the known competitive, competitive both in terms of pricing and coverage markets in the, in the, uh, so that's not on your, uh, your screen there because we hadn't, hadn't done that at the time. So I will tell you that you're looking at a $40,709 annual pricing from Liberty Mutual for all of your coverage with them. So we went out to market and the way you do that to, to get the best uh, result is that you give other insurance carriers and there's not many, we'll talk about that in a second, you give them a target premium. So what you don't want is to say Liberty Mutual is at 4,709 beat it and you get the business because you get carriers that will in quotation marks buy your insurance business for a year and then uh, uh, jack it up in the future years. So we went out to three different carriers. Uh, I'll name them, but they don't particularly matter to you. They are EMC, Selective, and Right Specialty. So we went, those are the only three, well, we went with the Selective, but they were double what they, what you're looking at there. So we went out to four total other marketplace markets. They write every single school district in the state of Kentucky, all of those markets do. So there are no other markets. Liberty Mutual writes about 150 of the 173. So I'm jumping around a little bit on you. Uh, the 40,709 is the Liberty Mutual premium. Uh, the quotes that we got back were 41,481 from EMC, 41,312 from select from a right. And as I said, uh, uh, because of the property rates that they were gonna charge us, selective was essentially double. So what we did to, to just to make sure you understand what I'm saying is we went out and said, okay, these other carriers, we have to have you between 37,000 and 38,000 to have you be a, vi a viable option for this district. We're not gonna, as, as bad as it sounds now, we're not gonna walk away from this great loss history we have unless you make us do so from a pricing standpoint. So they knew what it took for them to earn your business and they didn't do it. So in that sense, you've got a pure bid, you got a pure quote from everybody and we ended up with Liberty Mutual. So following that uh, and some conversations with uh, Ms. McCain, we went back to Liberty Mutual and gave them the option of coming down some. We didn't tell them, we told them we went out to market, we didn't, and they declined. So we've gone to the market, uh, Liberty Mutual is the best option we have in front of us. It would be good if we could get them some competition in the years to come, and that will be part of my job. But for now, Liberty Mutual is the market of choice for not only your friends. Uh, uh, of, the, of the 50 or so we write, 45 of them are with Liberty Mutual. The other five are with the right specialty. So uh, I'd be happy to entertain any, any thoughts, but it's important for me to make to help you understand that we went to the market for you and gave them that target and they didn't hit it. So questions in that about the process or anything like that. Anything to add, Ms. McCain? Or what did I miss? Um, well, I, and I had talked to the board um, last month and, and, and I first want to say, I mean, Jim has been in our corner throughout this. And he, he and I have had a lot of conversations um, because, you know, we, we were consistently for the last three years, we have been waiting for that workers' compensation to come down. And when we got the, um, the quote, I mean, it was really, it was really, it was really a punch in the gut because we had worked so hard to get that experience mod at that level. And then to see, you know, Liberty Mutual, you know, like I told you all last month, I felt like, you know, we have been good customers 
to Liberty Mutual. We've done what we're supposed to do. You know, we, we haven't had liabilities. We, we haven't had claims. I felt like we should have been given, you know, a break, uh, you know, just for being good customers. Um, and this is where I have to separate, you know, the fact that, that Liberty Mutual um, is their own entity. I mean, Jim definitely is working on our behalf. You know, he has our back and, um, you know, and we reached out to other school districts. We, we've reached out, you know, we talked to, to other insurance agents and we were upfront with Jim about that. Um, clearly, Liberty Mutual, the issue is they have no competition. Mm -hmm. So they don't have to negotiate and they know that. And I think it's really hard for Jim, um, you know, as, as our representative, because he wants to help us. It's really hard for me because I know that that, that savings, you know, it all for us, it, it, it trickles down to kids. You know, it's about kids. And the more that we can save at the district level, the, the more that we're going to be able to put for kids. Um, Jim understands that. Um, but at the same time, he can, you know, his hands are tied as well. Um, so this is where we are. But, uh, you know, I truly think Jim has worked, you know, as hard as he can on our behalf. I mean, I can tell you, I can send him an email and he is probably the most responsive person that I work with. I mean, he's, he's right there. And, uh, you know, we ask him to go to these other companies and I can tell you the only real other company, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, Jim, is Wright Specialty. Uh, they, they do some, uh, they do some insuring of schools. Most of these, the other two, he really only did it because I kind of pushed a little bit for him to do do that. I think Jim already knew what it was going to be, um, but I felt like, you know, for the board, the last three years, I know I've been saying, oh, you know, as soon as this experience mod drops off, we're gonna we're gonna you know feel that savings and. So, you know, it was a real blow, but I have to say Jim's worked really hard, you know, to try to get us, uh, you know, an, a decrease on this. So, you know, it, it, it is what it is, but I certainly, you know, it's no fault of yours, Jim. I know you are working on our behalf as hard as you can. And if you could do more, I know you would. Well, I share in your frustration, as I think you know, uh, I sent the actual quotes to uh, Ms. McCain and Barry. So they have the actual numbers, the numbers I just quoted for you to show that we actually did the quotes. Uh, Selective was, was one of the two carriers you mentioned. They don't write any schools in the state of Kentucky at this point. So I was pretty sure they weren't gonna be uh, viable. EMC is a little bit different in that they write a few, but we had some coverage concerns there. So rather than worry about the coverage concerns, we got their price first. And given that they weren't competitive, any more competitive than they were, we didn't worry about the coverage issues. So uh, this is not, uh, you know, obviously uh, I'm personally involved in 10 plus schools. Uh, so this is not a sideline for me. This is what I do for a living. And so we know the marketplace and uh, uh, Ms. McCain is correct. Liberty Mutual needs some competition. There are some factors in relation to some of the, the school leaders claims and sexual mis misconduct claims and auto claims that are driving the rate. But as I've told her multiple times, uh, insurance companies have a tendency to talk about both sides of your mouth, their mouth. If they, if you have bad losses, they raise your rates because you've had bad losses. If you've had uh, uh, great losses, what you lost history like you guys have, they blame the whole marketplace. So they sort of got you coming and going. So uh, competition that is uh, that provides the coverage you need is going to be the key, and we'll be, you know, again we write 50 schools in the state of Kentucky at Assured Partners, so we'll be at the at the front forefront of that. So we'll know any market that comes along, we'll bring them to you. So other school districts are feeling the same, you know, they're facing the same kind of increase. Yes, uh, average has been 12%. Uh, that would be entirely uh, 
dependent on losses. So to directly answer your question, 12% is average. You got nine and a half. Those that had loss problems got much more than that. I think, I think it's disappointing. I guess I know that you worked hard and Ms. McCain's working hard for us, but with our revenue decreasing, um, because um, since you're familiar with Augusta, with um, the loss of money from mostly Barry, um, Clope slash Barry, I think, you know, we were, or I was hoping that, um, you know, maybe because of the Kimmy dropping that, that it would decrease our, uh, our insurance. So, you know, it is disappointing and I, you know, hopefully they will get some competition in the future. I, I share that frustration and, and, you know, that, that workers comp stuff is always fragile, you know, who knows, we could have a claim anytime. So, I think uh, I lost. Celebrate that like we wanted to is, uh, I'm sorry, Julie, I talked over you there. Can you hear me? No, I'm sorry. Say it again. I saw your lips move, but I didn't see. I can hear you, Julie. Okay. Uh, yeah. So I, I, I think Ms. McCain will tell you, I sh not to the level you all do, but I share in that disappointment. Uh, it, it takes away some of the celebration for the big drop. Uh, in the experience mod that we have, that you have paid for, for the, for three years. So uh, the only solace I can give you is I'm hundred percent sure we're bringing the best option out there for 2020 and we'll continue to do so going forward. All right. Any other comments? All right. Well, thank you, Mr. Dowling. Um, we need to, I need a motion to approve the Liberty Mutual Insurance Renewal for 2020-2021. Mm. Laura, motion made. I need a second. Chastity, seconds. All yeah. in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed? All right, motion carried. Thank you, Mr. Dunn. Thank you all. I appreciate Thank you. Thank you. And, uh, We'll continue to work hard, I promise. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye. Thank you, Jim. Bye-bye. All right. Uh, the next thing, to approve the monthly facility report, you can see our monthly maintenance, repaired light on the outside of the library, replace exit sign in library, box floors, gym preparation for graduation, including the dumpsters from Rumpke, adding locks to the Rumpke dumpsters, cleaning and painting underway for the new school year. And then our miscellaneous summer projects there, repair suburban, repair parking lot potholes with concrete at entrance, install engraved bricks, repair sinkhole and parking lot, install Raptor system, system uh, replace board office roof, which is scheduled for August. Any questions? Nope. All right, I need a, a motion to approve the monthly facility report. Make a motion. Hey, John. Um, Laura made, or uh, Dion made the motion and the second was uh, Sean. And, uh, All in favor, I'll say aye. Uh, I'll close. All right, um, next thing is to approve the athletic activities guidelines and timelines. And Julie, uh, I think Mr. Kelch was going to um, go over that. Okay. And there's, not really, there's not really a lot to go over, just that they've opened it up a little bit, basically mainly for conditioning and some one-on-one, -on -one. Uh, no more than six people in the weight room, no more than 10 people in the gym. Of course, obeying the six foot social distancing uh, requirements there. Uh, each kid and coach will have to have a thermom or a temperature check before doing that. And I think we're going to start with two or three days a week and kind of monitor it. I think it's good for them to get back more than for a athletic standpoint, just to be back around and do a little um, start with our social, emotional, you know, just a way to check on a few of the kids and make sure they're doing all right. Ms. McCain talked about that earlier, that that was going to be key. Uh, and then, of course, with these spikes, you know we'll have to we'll have to watch that and uh, see if there's future guidance. But uh, we're going to start. I think Friday uh, we're going to start uh, waxing the gym floor, uh, 
and then we look to start Monday or Tuesday. I think Tuesday with, uh, you know, a couple of the programs, the boys basketball, the girls basketball, cross country, and then a volleyball, or volleyball you know, starting uh, two or three days a week. Uh, we're not going to do anything on Fridays. I kind of envision Friday as a day for our custodian custodial staff to get in the gym and to get in the weight room and do some extensive sanitizing, bleaching, cleaning, just to, you know, take all the precautions we can. So a uh, couple, like I said, a couple of days a week with those sports uh, uh, just to see how it goes and then to just await future guidance. But it'll be no more. And then one of the key things they've mentioned is not to intermingle groups. So if you start in group A, you have to stay with those kids. So in case there was a case, you're limiting the exposure uh, to your group. You haven't mixed groups. You haven't switched groups. You haven't been around all the team, but just a, a, a small portion of those. So uh, that was approved. Not, not unanimously, of course, there were several that, uh, on the KHS Board of Controls that was that were against. They've also, with that being said, normally if you have any uh, knowledge of Kentucky High School sports, as far as I can remember, June 25th through July 9th has been historically a dead period. There's been absolutely no, no activity. That's to kind of make sure the kids have two weeks that they're not allowed to do anything so crazy coaches can't work these kids. You know, 52 weeks a year, kids can have vacation, have to have some time off. But seeing as we've been off since about March 12th or 13th, they did waive the dead period this year, which I, I do agree with. I uh, thought that was a good move. But uh, and like I said, this is not in any ways, nobody's going to win or lose a regional championship in, in June, more so for these kids to get a step closer to some normal behavior, to be around some people, for their coaches to be able to interact and check on them and uh, – like I said, uh, and like Miss McCain said, more of a social emotional thing than us thinking we're gonna get an upper hand by, and which is why we're not gonna let these coaches go crazy and practice four or five times a week. I still don't think that's necessary right now. Uh, and and kind of like with everything else, let's go a couple of weeks, see what happens, see how people do and respond, and then you know just keep a close eye on that. But I'm excited, and I know the coaches are uh, to have a chance to get with their kids a little bit. Okay. I've, got one, I've got one question, uh, Principal Couch. Yes, I know there'll be some, I know that there will be probably some outside conditioning. Uh, what about the weather? Why, especially with heat index? Because you know we sure don't want anybody going down. Laura, there's the KH, KHSA has rules in place already uh -huh. based on the heat index, and if it's I can't rattle those off, but I know if it's a certain point, there has to be 15 minute breaks. If there's a, a the next level, uh, there ha with all of them there has to be water. Then if it gets to a certain point, you're not even. I I'm with you, Laura. If it's that hot, like I said, I don't think this is necessary right now. As far as I agree, if we don't do it, we're not going to be behind. Mm -hmm. So if if you've got groups that have to be outside and it's to a point where it's dangerous, we just we just say we don't need to do it. I don't think it's. it's I'm sorry. Very, it, I don't think it's important enough to risk the health of somebody practicing in 95 any, degree heat. Yeah. Is there any possible way that uh, we could say maybe that they should not be conditioning outside between 12 and 6? That's the hard or the hottest times of the day. And it, it just worries me because I've seen so many other schools have children collapse and heat strokes and, and different things. Absolutely. Yeah. I, and I do think. I think I don't think we have the numbers that we'll do a lot of conditioning outside other than maybe Mr. Literal. I know he has one of those cool gadgets that lets you know the heat index and, mm -hmm. and he's he's got as much sense as any coach that I've ever worked with. Matter of fact, I think he's only starting one day a week, Tim, if I'm not mistaken. And uh I don't think his is in the middle of the day, of course, because no, he I works maybe a little bit after four in the mornings and evenings. But uh we'll keep a real close eye on that. And if it were to get real hot, like I said, we just either go on the, uh, on the treadmills or in the gym or just not have it. I was just thinking for our safety, no problem. I, I agree a hundred percent. We'll monitor that very closely. I think that's a great, great question and a great concern. None of us want anything to happen to them. No, of course not. Thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely. No, thank you, Laura, for always looking out for them. Any other questions? 
All right, I need a motion to approve the athletic activities guidelines and timelines. I'll make a motion, motion May. <laughs> Beyond made the motion, I need a second. Laura, second. Laura, second. All in favor, say aye. 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 All right, uh, approve our calendar options for 2020-2021. Do we need any discussion on that or did everyone um, get a chance to look over those? I'd like to know. Um, I'll just um, just mention that you know the the purpose there um, is to be proactive um, based on the many unknowns. So the Kentucky Department of Ed recommended school districts go on and develop an early calendar, a traditional calendar, and a late calendar, and build a 152 day calendar with a seven hour school day. So when you see the um, calendar that says traditional, that is the calendar that the board had previously approved um, already for um, the upcoming school year. So the early calendar is basically a, an August 12th start date. The late calendar is a um, September 8th start date. And then the um, the 152 day calendar, what we did is how we built that is we uh, basically aligned it to the traditional calendar. And so most of the days um, off would be after Christmas break, instead of that traditional two weeks, we would be off almost a month. And we did that because likely that's when there would be bad weather. Oftentimes that's when you have um, spikes in illness and flu. And if we have, you know, coronavirus spikes that could kind of coincide. So we thought that um, would be a good way to build that 152 day calendar. I know, for example, Moorhead State, um, they have basically done something similar for their school calendar this year. They actually are starting a little earlier. They're adding a little time onto their classes and then they're ending after Thanksgiving break. So their semester will end after Thanksgiving. They will be finished for the semester. So it's, it's kind of similar um, to that after our Christmas break, um, we would end. Now, if we start having these intermittent closures, um, you know, we might have to revert to the 152 day calendar if we see that is the direction we're going in, we may have to extend the school day. Um, as you saw from, um, from that, we would have to um, add uh, uh, about 20 minutes onto the school day in order to um, meet the minimum requirement of 1,062 minutes um, for the school year. So that is where we are. Um, like I said, we hope we can stick to our traditional calendar that was already previously approved. But that's all I have unless you have any questions. Any questions? No. All right, I need a motion to approve the calendar options for 2020-2021. May. Cassidy made the motion, I need a second. Beyond second. Beyond second, all in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Um, and then we have to approve our or the first reading of the local wellness policy. Did everyone get a chance to um, read those attachments? Mm -hmm. uh, Ms. McCain, do you want to say anything about any of that? Um, yes. First, I want to um, say this is all connected to the um, food service audit that we had this year. Um, that was one of the findings that we did have a local wellness policy, but they recommended that we add a school designee that would basically oversee um, the oversight and school compliance. Typically, this would be approved at the school level through a site-based council but since we don't have a site-based council, that's why we're having the, the board approve it. So it is not a board policy per se, it's a school policy. Um, I did want to mention that, um, I, you know, our food service department and Mr. Kasky, 
they did an outstanding job this year. Um, you know, they, they did a lot of extra work. Anytime it's a audit year for food service, you can bet that there's going to be a lot of additional um, time and effort and work. And like I told you in the notes, um, if, if you read it or had time to, uh, I know, for example, Mr. Caskey, throughout this process, the last eight months, he has answered 2,200 questions and he's had to upload um, 70 documents. So even though we're a small district, we still have the same requirements as if, you know, we were at Jefferson County. He did the same amount of work that Jefferson County would do. And um, I have to tell you, food service hasn't always looked this good. And we've okay. done audits in the past that, um, you know, there had been recommended monetary sanctions. So Mr. Kasky gets a little nervous when we have the exit summary. So of course he came in just really unsure, uh, didn't know what to expect. And she pulled up the report. And I mean, there were two just very minor, very minuscule findings there. And so it was a big relief, but really it was a testament to you know, his hard work. I mean, he, he really busted his tail all year long. Um, it was an ongoing process. It literally goes on eight, um, eight to nine months out of the, the year to prepare and to, um, you know, basically share everything that, that, that they, they need. So just my hats off to Mr. Kasky and the food service department and the outstanding job that they did. Any questions? No. Tell him that we are pleased with his, uh, his progress. It sounds like he's doing a fantastic job. He does. Um, so I needed a, someone to uh, make a motion to approve the first reading of the local wellness policy. Motion made, Laura. Laura made a motion. I need a second. Beyond second. Beyond second. All in favor, say aye. 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 All right, business and consent items, approved previous meeting minutes, approved use of district property, approved fundraisers, approved renewal application of district participation in the emergency non-certified school personnel program, approved fidelity bond of treasurer for 2020-2021, approved bond of depository for 2020-2021, Approve acceptance of donations, approve bills, approve treasurer's report. And I have a motion to uh, approve the business and consent items. John made. John made the motion. Do I have a second? I'll cast a second. All in favor say aye. 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 All right. And then we have, I need a motion to approve for adjournment. Beyond motion made. I made motion, a second. Laura, second. Laura, second. All in favor, say aye. Aye. And that concludes our, our school board meeting. <sighs> I've been in the room all day. I'm happy about that. <laughs> okay. Um, let me stop the recording here. Uh,